Hey guys, welcome to another Pro Guys video. My name is Nathan Ng, and I just wanted to take this time to say that I really appreciate all the great comments that you guys leave below, as well as the constructive ones, as I want to continue to improve and give you guys the best content possible. So, with that being said, with the rank season now underway, we want to go over the five shortcuts to help you climb faster. While there are a lot of things we all want to and need to work on to improve, our analysts have compiled what they believe will help you guys climb quickly during the early season. A lot of stuff has changed, but essentially the priorities are still the same as previous seasons. However, the thought process you need to adopt this season is a little bit different. Before we get started though, do me a quick favor and leave an answer to this question in the comments down below. What's something that you realized helped you climb? If you guys know me pretty well already, you know the answer is going to be boba and slash mute all. I know communication is super important, but when there's no constructive criticism or productive feedback, I just mute everybody else and just play the game by myself. Also. Are you getting ganked in your own lane? Constantly demolished? Well, don't worry, we've got you covered. Pro Guides is a number one proven way to quickly help you level up your League of Legends skills. Whether you're looking for tier lists, champion guides, coaching, or courses from your favorite pro players, Pro Guides is where you'll find them. Even players like Nightblue, Bunnyfufu, and Loco Doco support Pro Guides. So what are you waiting for? Click the link and start improving right now. So, let's get started with the video. First things first, guys, get your priorities straight. League hasn't changed too much, but a lot of things are definitely different, and there are a lot of nuances behind them. Whether what we're about to mention is good news or bad news really depends on you. I'll be an optimistic Kha'Zix and say change is good, and you're gonna have to use your head this season to really think about which objectives are important. Last season, it was almost always better to prioritize gold over anything else. Rift turrets, turret platings, and even global gold from breaking turrets was much more valuable than basically any combination of dragons. Sure, Triple Infernal was pretty broken last season, but let's be real, we don't get many of those games anyway. Dragon buffs have readjusted this season, and Dragon Souls have been added as well. The permanent buff it provides can alter the dynamic of each individual game significantly. So you need to think about what it means when Summoner's Rift makes a specific transformation. If you want to go the extra mile, you can also actively think about which four elements are left in the pool once the second dragon spawns. For example, if the first dragon was Infernal, and the second one that spawns is Cloud, then you know that you're either going to be playing with an Ocean Rift or a Mountain Rift. Whether or not you choose to do your extra credit, you need to actively engage yourself once the game announces which rift you'll be playing on that game. By that point in the game, you should already know which 10 champions are in that game. Think about the various effects the Dragon Souls have for the team, and if your team is burst damage heavy with a couple of assassins for example, a mountain rift spells out trouble for you. It's in your best interest to do whatever it takes to make sure that your opponents can't secure that Dragon Soul. The extra defensive stats they'll receive from dragons and bonus shields from the soul might prove to be too troublesome to deal with later on in that game. At the end of the day, any dragon soul is good for any team. It's just that some souls are going to be kind of OP depending on the team composition or hard counter yours. You can say that dragon souls are the sole reason that you're going to win or lose. And don't turn a vision on securing four dragons. You can absolutely win a game without a dragon soul. When teams only get one dragon, it appears that Ocean Dragon yields the highest win rate as a standalone buff. I agree with these numbers in practice because I personally believe it's the strongest dragon in the game at the moment. Over different spreads of dragon spawns, statistics shows that teams that take at least one Ocean Dragon have higher win rates overall. Let's talk about Rift Herald a little bit too. On the red side, first, Rift Herald yields a slightly higher win rate than the first dragon does, while on the blue side, it heavily favors dragons by a landslide. What our analysts are able to piece together from this information is that Rift Herald is more valuable when you have counterpicks on your team. The most important objective is still Baron Nasher, and if you're able to secure gold leads with counterpicks, Rift Herald, First Herd, and whatever other means necessary, you can end the game before those dragon buffs get out of control. You need to be weighing the weight of each objective based on team comps and the game state, and there's not going to be a one-size-fits-all. To make a vague generalization though, value Ocean Dragons and Baron Nasher every game, but also Rift Heralds when you have winning lanes. In economics, this is called opportunity cost, which basically just means the opportunity for gone for something else. This is what I'm doing with my college degree. One thing that not many players do is make the most out of champion select. While this isn't the LCS or an organized league of any sort, <laughs> definitely far from organized league, solo queue rank games are still competitive. You want to do anything you can do to get that edge on your opponents. Ask your teammates if you can hold your own pick for counter pick later on in the draft. When you're first or second pick in the lobby, you're most likely picking blind but you can get around this by using chat. Especially if you're higher ELO, you can expect many players to own a lot of every champion in the game. At the worst, your teammates could say no, and you'll proceed normally. However, in games where someone is willing to be your knight in shining armor and let you pick out the champion for them, this can be a heaven send. If you play mid or top lane especially, it's extremely valuable to have a counter pick. In 1v1 matchups, you can take advantage of your opponents and build those leads that you need to carry games. Counterpicks are a lot less important for AD carries and have some importance in the jungle and support roles. 
There's some statistical evidence to support this as well, and it kind of makes sense logically too. If you take into account meta bot laner's worst matchups, yes, their win rates are going to be impressive and well below 50%. However, when considering the win rates of meta picks in other roles against hard counters, their win rates are lower, often taking as low as 41% when playing versus a direct counter. As a bot laner, you're almost always going to be a ranged champion, meaning it's much easier to stabilize and try to power farm. Junglers can path to avoid their enemies and take lesser losses, but as junglers know, this can still prove troublesome. Supports are stuck in a dual lane, but I personally believe that support matchups generally have more impact on how the 2v2 plays out. Hashtag support difference, am I right? Considering this, I think the best use of this tactic is if you play Marksman, pick someone that's safe like Caitlyn and enable one of your other teammates to make a counter pick. You'll at worst have a farm lane and allow one of your teammates to have a favorable matchup. I also firmly believe that supports dictate the pace of the bot lane, so this can definitely play out in your favor. If you're a jungler, you can adapt based on the draft and who you play. For those of you that like playing aggressive junglers and like to invade, you might want to see what the enemy picks before asking if you can counter pick your opponent. For example, if the enemy has already locked in their own jungler, you can pick your own jungler immediately or let someone earlier on in the draft pick them for you. I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate, it's easier to play a jungle when you have winning lanes so do yourself a favor, help your teammates help you. In cases where they show laners early on, you might want to ask your teammates to pick their own matchups first so you can control the pace of the game in a winning jungle matchup. Alright, next up is something pretty generic but it'll hold true for League's entire existence. Narrow down your champion pool. You can one trick a champion if you want, but ultimately what matters is simply choosing less champions to play more often. Although League of Legends isn't a game that's the most demanding in terms of mechanics and gameplay, it does require confidence, which is what I'm lacking after losing my first ranked game of placements. You need to be confident in your own pick and trust them. Everyone just wants someone to believe in them after all, whether it's in anime or in real life. While comfort on a pick is emphasized a lot, people forget that confidence goes hand in hand with it. When people go for those insane plays where they risk it all, or even if they had pushed the champion to their limit, it's because they're able to execute those plays and also have confidence to attempt them. On a champion that you haven't clocked many hours onto, you may not know their limits, and you may be deficient in either the mechanics necessary or get too nervous when trying to do something crazy. I can't tell you how many times myself or our analysts at ProGuys have emphasized comfort on a champion is the most important thing. If you have the counter pick or you're playing an OP champion, it's irrelevant if you can't play them. Leave the harder champions or ones that you don't know how to play for casual games so you can practice them. For ranked games, you need to play whoever you can perform on. Sometimes high ELO one tricks can win with sub-optimal picks or even win losing matchups because they understand the nuances of their champion. It's easy to blame those things on matchup or how underpowered your champion is, but realistically speaking, it won't truly hold you back until high diamond at the earliest. Another way to apply this is to play easy champions when you're auto-filled. You don't want to slave away hours and hours of learning some difficult champion on a role that you're not planning to play regularly. Check out our tier list in between patches and see what's strong and choose something that's easy to learn. Your autofill games matter. Because they still earn or lose you LP, don't take them too lightly. I find the best success basically playing a few champions in my main role and learning one or two easy champions in every other role. And for our next advice, stop following roams at bad times. The only person that you should be following is me on Instagram at Nathan underscore ING, shameless self plug. Anyway, while this is mostly focused on mid laners, this next shortcut definitely applies to all roles. Stop following roams at bad times. I see this way too often when I watch lower ELO players. They're always so focused on avoiding the spam pings that they expect you to stop making the best decisions. Anytime your opponent leaves the lane to roam, ask yourself two questions. First, can you follow them? And second, do you get anything following them? Another economics lesson, using opportunity cost. It's pretty straightforward. If you're going to follow someone and they can kill you for it, that's not the best choice. Laners will often put the roam to a halt, hide in the fog of war, and ambush you. When your opponent is moving first and they're going to kill one of your teammates, odds are that you can't stop them even if you're second. You can get there for the skirmish if that will occur, but know that unless everyone is full health from the get-go, you likely won't stop any casualties. We're not saying that following roams is an inherently bad move. We're saying that always following roams is a bad one. If you follow roam and get nothing out of it, then you could have gotten a farm lead, which gives you a level advantage and gold lead, and have taken a turret plate instead. It's pretty doomed to be honest, and if your opponent kills one of your teammates, they get 300 gold. By following them and getting nothing back, your opponent ends up ahead of you by 300 gold. If you stay in your lane and farm a wave, you can get to farm that minion wave and usually take a turret plate, equalizing the gold difference. And if you get flamed and you know it's not your fault, just slash mute all. 
If your opponent takes longer, or if they end up taking a lot of damage during these roams, you can save for another wave or another turret plating coming out ahead. This is usually a safer play as you'll always end up equalizing or pulling ahead of your opponent. This is a low risk, safe reward. So that's another economic lesson. I'm just trying to teach you guys what I learned in college, man. By default, staying in lane to punish the roam and putting your direct opponent on a timer is the better move. However, like we said, you need to assess the situation. If everyone in a fight is pretty low, it might be worth it to follow the roam if you can potentially pick up a triple kill when cleaning up. Look at the scenario, consider what the likely results are, and make the safer or more rewarding choice. And for our final tip, you want to get more gold. I mean, it's a simple one, and I know a lot of you guys watching can apply this. You need to get more gold, literally. Just do it. Think about all the ways you can get Golden League. Farming minions, taking turret plating, destroying turrets, Baron, killing your opponents, and whatever other means you can think of. There are a lot of things you need to look at, but you can definitely increase the amount of gold you find in the game simply by not ARAMing it down mid at the 15 minute mark. Look at your side lanes, apply some decent macro play, and keep farming. Players generally see a huge dip in their minion count as the game progresses because they stop farming. Dragon or Rift Herald is up, sure, go ahead and group for it if you think that's the most important objective up. When they're gone though, if you're still ARAMing and there's no objective to fight over, I'm gonna say that you're doing something wrong. And there's no real indicator that some fight is gonna break out soon, so this should be a good time where you're farming up. You need to maintain your income and continue to grow stronger, otherwise you'll fall short later that game. Anytime you have an item advantage over your opponents, that's a time where you can easily carry team fights and outright beat out your enemies in duels. Farming well and ensuring that you can continue to do well as the game progresses allows you to be stronger than your opponent for when those key fights do break out. Make sure that you're practicing your CSing as well. Learn your matchups and like we mentioned in our last bit, don't follow bad roams at bad times. You'll want to stay consistent. The one way to do that is to consistently find a lot of gold. By doing so, you'll be in a position to carry your games more often and therefore increase your win rate. That's going to conclude this video and thanks so much again for watching guys. I hope that you guys have found a strong start to the season and if you haven't, no worries, keep on that grind and keep playing to improve. Like I said, I started the season 0 and 1 and uh, 2020 may not be the year for me. You know, I think I might, <laughs> I might be done with ranked. But uh, make sure once again to check out ProGuides.com as well as our YouTube channel for more informative content. Again, my name is Nathan Ng and make sure to leave any comments down below, uh, constructive criticism or whatnot, so I can continue to improve for you guys. If you guys want to add me on League of Legends, my IGN is N8DGR8. I've had the pleasure to play with some of you guys already and it's been a real blast. And until next time, good luck on the Rift Summoners.